Hi, it's Rachel again, and this is video journal number 10 for my international public relations class. Um, basically, this week I've kind of left a bit of a gap between the class and my journal, so I've kind of forgotten already what we've talked about, which is kind of bad, but my excuse is that with so many other classes going on and so many assessments all running through um, my mind, it's been kind of hard to keep track of everything bar the thing that I'm working on at that particular time, um, which is something that I guess most students will, will struggle with, especially coming up to the very, the very end of term. We've only sort of got um, a couple of weeks to go and everything is due all together, all at once. Um, and it's just, it's kind of that stressful time and it, the end seems so close and yet so far away. So uh, I'm really looking forward to um, the break, but I know that I'm trying to stay motivated and, and keep on top of everything. And basically in this last class, I sort of had a quick look back and we talked about the practice matrix specifically, which was this fantastic grid in the textbook and I kind of wish that I had have known about it earlier. I sort of, it's, it's hard to see, but I read, I read through so much of the textbook really early on to help me with the first essay that we did because I was really struggling to grasp what the circuit of culture was and, and how I incorporate that into sort of a real life situation, a real life campaign, a real life company. So I went and read ahead sort of so far and I literally stopped the chapter just before chapter 10 and then I, because I'd already read through, I sort of neglected going back and, and sort of continuing on until now and this sort of, the questions that it, it asks you would have been really helpful in terms of planning our um, group assessment and we, looking back, we sort of, we sort of did follow some of these um, but it would have been nice to have sort of a little checklist and I've sort of gone back and tried to have a look and see if we've covered what they've talked about and I feel like we have um, but at the same time we've sort of done so much and put so much research and gotten so far with our, our assignment that we could keep on going forever and keep on writing things, keep on changing things, keep on trying to take in further considerations and um, at some point, uh, I think we actually say I've kind of got to cut the cord and say, okay, we've done sort of this much. This is our plan for now. If we were going to put this into to practice in, in real life, we really were going to go to Bangladesh and and implement this this campaign. I think that half of the work, half of the sort of strategy, would really be determined almost while you're there. If you sort of follow follow the sort of postmodernist approach to international public relations and sort of almost follow these steps that are in this matrix, um, you're, you kind of have to be in the moment, in, in, in the middle of the campaign to sort of to see how people are consuming things, how they're creating meaning theirself and, and how what you get back from scanning. So if you're doing environmentally scanning, what information you receive, how you adjust your messages, how you adjust your tactics, how your objectives change, um, how your messages change, everything is, if you sort of, I feel that what I've taken away is that if you really truly follow this, you obviously, you definitely need a plan. I think going into anything without a plan wouldn't be smart, but having that fluidity, having that fluidity, having that, that um, mindset that, okay, things may change and it's likely that they will change and how are we going to deal with the fact that they're going to change and how are we going to implement these changes based on the people who we're targeting, based on the people who we are trying to build those relationships with, with the people, based on what they want and our, um, our sort of working towards a sort of a win-win situation. Um, yeah, so basically you, you do have to be prepared to, to make changes and take things into account and almost be able to sort of strategize and strategize on the spot in a way which I think is important. It's probably a skill that 
it's good to have, like as a student it's good to sort of know that this is coming up and this is necessary and this is what you may have to do that's just sort of your best practiced approach but I think it's a skill that you might develop over time the, the longer you're sort of working in the PR the longer you're working in international PR <coughs> Um, the better that you'll be at being able to to adjust and, and develop campaigns that truly do resonate with, with the people that you're talking to and I think that's a really good goal in my personal opinion, something, something really positive to aim, to aim for. Um, I think, I don't know if I've said it before but at this point in time while I am a public relations major I don't know if I necessarily want to work specifically in PR. I chose PR because I thought the communication skills that you sort of learn and the, the premise of sort of PR and um, the idea of relationship building and working with people and things like that would be necessary no matter what sort of aspect of business I go into. Even if I think even if you became a um, CFO or something like that, if you're, if you're in, in finance, I think it's still necessary to understand these principles and um, and have this this approach because it's as we've talked about before um, concentrating on concentrating just on the bottom line probably isn't the way necessarily to success it's concentrating on the people and then hoping that the, the bottom line will come from that so whether I go into public relations or not I think that what I've learnt has been really beneficial and um, if I was to go into public relations more and and work in in an international context then I, I really do feel that sort of this way, the way that we've been talking about in the textbook is is what I should aim for, is what anybody should aim for and it's kind of sad that I guess people don't at this point in time. I'm not saying that I don't think that they will because I feel that the world, or in my opinion anyway, that things are definitely moving, I, or I'd like to think or like to hope they are definitely moving towards a sort of a postmodernist view. Even sort of sitting in my marketing classes and sitting in my advertising classes which we also have to take, they there's, there's, there is a lot of talk about speaking to the consumer first and then developing the product or then developing the message or the advertisement and taking into taking into account what you, your target audience, your target market, target public wants and then developing your strategy based on that and I think that's a good step towards uh, a more postmodernist um, practice. Um, so I think what else, if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about, we, I think, again, we, we sort of reiterated what we talked about last week in terms of how uh, the moments of culture affect um, practice of PR in a sort of very um, practical sense, and we sort of went over what you can do in that, in the sort of linear process that a lot of companies work in, how we can sort of bring in some of these postmodernist um, views and, and practices into that um, linear, linear sort of structure that we're almost held to because of sort of the corporation that you may be working for and their policies and procedures and how they sort of do um, work. And it was interesting talking about hearing stories about IBM and how you sort of still fighting <laughs> to to get people to understand how. Um, hiding things isn't a good idea and how talking to the people is is always going to come out better and and things like that and things that 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 after after sitting in this class seem so logical which I think I've said about a million times and yet they aren't um, aren't put into practice and I can understand why that would be hard because I know especially just sort of in life in general I know I've sort of got parents and they're um, they're from the baby boomer generation which a lot of um, directors and CEOs of companies at this point in life are probably from that generation and it is hard for them to sort of change I guess it's hard to sort of see hard to get certain certain mentalities 
to change because if you've sort of done something for so long, I know I don't like change and I can understand why some people would, would sort of go against sort of new thinking and, and new approaches. So I can see why that happens, but hopefully things will change and as, as sort of new generations move through, I definitely think we're sort of heading heading towards a change. Um, I don't know if there's sort of anything else to talk about for this, this journal. Our assignment is going well. We're pretty much done. We've just um, got to do the PowerPoint presentation, which is which is again also pretty much done. It's a matter of sort of learning learning what we have to say. I'm sort of a bit nervous. I'm not a big fan of presenting, but I feel confident in what we've done and hopefully if it doesn't come across in the presentation, um, you'll be able to read it in the report. So yeah, I think that's it for now. Bye.